Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there was a little orphan girl. In the summer, she was forced to walk barefoot as she was quite poor. And in the winter, she was forced to wear large wooden shoes, which made her feet so sore and red. In the village, there lived an old shoemaker's wife. And she had seen the girl in summer and in winter and thought she ought to have her own pair of shoes. So the old shoemaker's wife, who had never made a pair of shoes herself, but had watched her husband do it countless times, sat down and made the girl a pair of shoes using red cloth. They weren't perfect, but they would do. The little girl, whose name was Catherine, wore the shoes for the first time to church. They were not suitable for the occasion, but she wore them as they were the only pair of shoes she owned. Just as she was entering the church, a large carriage rode up and stopped. Inside was an old lady who looked upon Catherine and pitied her. She said to the priest, If you give me the little girl, I will take care of her. And so Catherine went to live with the old lady. She thought it was because of the red shoes, but she was wrong. The old lady thought them hideous and had them burned. Catherine was dressed very nicely, and she was taught to read and write and sew. One day, the queen was travelling through the countryside and had brought her little daughter, the princess, along. All the people gathered to see the little princess. She was dressed in fine white clothes and wore a beautiful red pair of shoes. They were indeed much finer than the ones the old shoemaker's wife had made for Catherine. But still, there is nothing in the world that can be compared to red shoes. Sometime later, Catherine was old enough to have a new wardrobe. And in addition to many fine dresses, she was to have some new shoes. The best shoemaker in town was hired, and Catherine went to his shop to be fitted. In the shop, there was a glass case full of the loveliest shoes anyone had ever seen, including a pair of white slippers and a pair of red shoes, just like the ones the princess had worn. How beautiful they were! The shoemaker said they had been made for the daughter of a count, but that they had not fit her. The old lady, who could not see very well and was colourblind, asked, I suppose they have been made of shiny leather? Yes, they shine beautifully, Catherine replied. The red shoes fit her, and they were bought. But the old lady thought them white, and if she had known they were red, she would never have allowed it, for she thought red shoes were not suitable for a proper lady. And when they attended a tea at the home of the Duchess, Catherine wore her red shoes. The ladies were shocked and told the old lady so, and she scolded Catherine when they arrived home. You are not to wear red shoes. Give them to me, I shall burn them. Catherine gave the old lady a pair of old brown shoes she had outgrown, and they were burned, and her red shoes were saved. The next week, the old lady wanted to take air with Catherine, and so they went on a walk to town. Catherine had slipped on her red shoes. On the way into town, it was quite dusty, and Catherine's shoes turned grey. At the town gates, there stood an old soldier leaning on a crutch. He had a long beard with strands of both red and white, and he bowed when the ladies approached. May I clean your shoes, milady? he asked. And the old lady was grateful. Then Catherine put out her little foot, and the soldier exclaimed, oh, What pretty dancing shoes! 
he tapped the shoes with his hands and said, Set fast when you dance. The old lady gave the soldier a gold coin and the women continued their walk. And all the people in town saw Catherine's red shoes. But Catherine did not mind their whispers, for she loved her shoes. And when the carriage came to get them and Catherine was stepping inside, the old soldier appeared again and said, My, what pretty dancing shoes. And Catherine could not help herself and danced a few steps. But then she could not seem to stop. It was as if the shoes had power of their own. She danced round and round in the street for she could not stop. Finally, a footman came to her rescue and lifted her into the carriage. But her feet continued to dance, and she kicked the old lady several times. At last, they were able to get a hold of her feet and remove the red shoes, and her legs were finally able to rest. Once they were home, the shoes were put into a cupboard. But Catherine could not help stealing a peek at them every so often. But she loved them so. It was not long after this that the old lady fell ill. The doctor said she would spend the rest of her days in bed and that she must be waited upon hand and foot. This was Catherine's duty, and she nursed the old woman as best she could. One day, an invitation arrived. There was to be a grand ball in the town, and Catherine was invited. She looked at the red shoes and decided there was no wrong in it. So she put them on and went to the ball. When the dancing began, Catherine joined in. But when she wanted to go left, the shoes went right. And when she wanted to step forward, the shoes went backward. And they danced her all around the room until she fell into the arms of a very handsome gentleman. He caught her and smiled. And they danced and the shoes obeyed. When it was over, the gentleman suddenly disappeared. And the music stopped, but the shoes did not, and they danced her right out of the ballroom, down the stairs, out of the door, and into the forest. Suddenly, she saw a face in the moonlight. For a moment, Catherine was frightened, but then the shoes stopped dancing, and the man stepped out from behind the tree. It was the old soldier. But he did not look as old, nor did he have his crutch. What beautiful dancing shoes you have, my dear. But if you could choose a life of happiness, or to keep your red shoes and your fine things, which would you choose? Catherine looked down at the shoes. She fancied them very much. But she knew that they would not give her the kind of happiness that would fulfill her for the rest of her life. I would choose happiness, she said to the soldier as she stepped out of the shoes. Once Catherine's feet were out of the shoes, they melted into the earth. And when she looked up, the old soldier was no longer the old soldier. He was the gentleman she had danced with at the ball. And he took her hand and led her to his home, a small but beautiful cottage in the woods, where he kept pigs and geese and horses and cows and farmed the land which was bountiful. They were married that very night and lived happily ever after. The End our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>